So wherever the vehicle is now, mm -hmm. follow the contour. But if that's difficult, ship moves. Then, but if you zoom out a little, you'll see the contour is going to change. So we can like hook up with it again later. Um, while yeah. we're here, is there any chance that we could go to this coral up here? Yes. Oh yeah. Maybe the easier move is is um, yeah that the ship should be able to move like that, right? Yeah, we should be able to follow yeah. it. All right, let's do it. But while we're here, yeah, go for it, Sarah. What do we want to look at. Look at the shrimp. Okay, go ahead and zoom. Looks like potentially another Madripoor. Oh, and a squat lobster. <laughs> That's a really menacing out. squat <laughs> lobster. It's like, do not touch my madripora. Ooh, and there's also a feather star kind of just chilling on top. And a basket mm. star on the left. Yeah, so we do not have the stolkim up, right? No, it's going. Oh, yep. um, okay. Could we... Uh, let me just make sure. Could we get maybe a picture of this with you the can get me a view of it up here so I can frame it yeah that's a great this is a great example we have a bunch of associates on here we have so it's funny when I try to select it um, it says it's in use by another user I am looking at it over there oh yeah it might be over there over does, here? does that mean I have to release it I have no clue. Yeah, you would. <laughs> That's the KBM system is haunted. It might let you. There's some kind of orange thing near the back, too, on top there. Oh, I see that. I wonder what you are. There's a lot going on here. So that crinoid is not really so Oh, is it another on. squat lobster? Just a different color? Yeah, it is. A different type. Let me see if I can... You want me to you want me to try it? Or sure. Um, oh, let's see. Another one in the back. Yeah, so are they called squat zoom. lobsters because like the way they look like they're squatting? Um. Or. Probably. <laughs> I thought it was because of the way they kind of shuffled back. Yeah. No. Hmm. Can you take pictures from that one or no? Does it not work? I could try. Yeah, I don't know how to work it, but. Oh. Let's get the One moment. Amber, can you get me the what the still camera is seeing up on one of the monitors here? Yes. You can take whatever whatever you want. You can take that pilot camera one if you want. Okay. I think that's where they're looking at it. Okay, that'll do too. That's fine. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right one. Hold on. No, that's good. I, l I like to keep the pilot camera, actually, if I can. Yeah. In the back there, somebody identified that as a homoid carrier crab. Oh, sorry. It's PC-3. There we go. Uh-huh. Oh, I did get it. Oh, that's really loud. What did I do? Can people hear me? Yeah, I can hear oh, you. Oh, okay. Um, so, we're going to try and use the still cam to get a picture of this. Put the... <laughs> it is. So what's currently on the screen is what we want to get a picture of. Okay, so we're trying to use the scope cam. Yeah. 
Zoom out on the Zeus, please. And then just this one. Okay, and this is just manual. Yep. Okay. Again, I think. Let's see where it goes. If I remember Leela doing this. Okay, yeah, we're getting closer. Hey Amber, do you know where this file, this folder is for the still camera? No. I'd have to okay. get that info That's for you. Fine. So for those of you who are tuning in, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are here in an area of the Pacific Ocean called the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. We actually are lying just right outside of the boundaries of the monument. And we are currently exploring an unnamed guillot at the bottom of the sea floor. We are uh, about 1,142 meters below the ocean's surface. We are currently exploring the uh, side of this guillot and getting some great pictures of some yeah. squat lobsters, crinoids, and other sorts of corals down here. Okay. So I think that it looks like we have people tuning in from all around the world. Ranging from United Kingdom, Israel, the Czech Republic, and Brazil, all the way to Singapore, Turkey, and Australia. So, welcome aboard, everyone. Sorry, I keep forgetting how to operate the station. Also, does anyone know how to change the file type that it outputs? You're trying to, t we can't really hear you. You're oh, trying really? to change the file. The file type? File type? Yeah. I. No? There must That's be fine. a setting. Uh, I'm not sure. That's all right. Um, there should be a way to. Can I see that piece of paper again? Is there any way that we can kind of get like a bit of a little more above it and closer? Yep. Yeah. So for those of you who are wondering, how can I be a part of the uh, Nautilus? How can I get on an expedition and do some cool ocean science with you guys? Well, you can go to our website, nautiluslive.org. And you can go to our about page and scroll under and find employment opportunities. We have opportunities ranging from internships, uh, fellowships, and uh, other jobs like working on the ship's crew, working oh, as yeah. a scientist on board and on shore. And we are looking for people of all skills and talent, ranging from teachers and artists to scientists and engineers. Yeah. So this area of the ocean we are currently exploring, uh, right outside the P Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument, it's an area of U.S. territory that is under consideration to become a marine national sanctuary. This sanctuary would be placed right on top of the monument and would see to protect the waters surrounding uh, for, for preservation and conservation. One of those and if you are interested are <laughs> if you are interested in uh, learning more you yeah, can right. go to our website and oh, our we have a few oh, blogs yeah. that talk about uh, the potential monument I mean sorry potential sanctuary and you can also find a hyperlink for it 
on our updated current status page on the home page. And it's currently open to public comment on the monument, so have your voices heard. Sorry, just doing some troubleshooting here to make sure I know how to use this. Bring the ship 10 meters closer to us. I think, I mean, I think I'm doing it. <laughs> so we, I think we should be good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow, I was looking at it wrong. Let's see. Yeah, so... I don't know. It's kind of in a tough spot. The way the ROV is facing now on the regular camera is kind of perfect, but the way it's on the still camera is still kind of... It's like difficult. Sorry, this is my first time using this camera. Um, yeah, I... Oh, we have real star, I mean, feather star action, but, yeah, I think, I mean, I think these pictures are, they're not amazing, <laughs> but I think they're the best we're going to get with this angle on this ridge, so I think we should be good. I can get you another angle, but I thought, do you want to be in, like, Kind of, yeah, kind of above it, like how the ROV is now, but close, if that makes sense. Do you want to be in, uh, in up against the side of the ridge, though, or like more out front to get the thing um, like this? Up or? against the side of the ridge, but like above it, if that makes sense. So like how the um, normal camera is, how yeah. that is, but for the still cam. Yeah, but it, it only looks straight out, right? So the oh, more right. I go above it, it just you just yep. lose it, right? Okay. Yeah. Then I think. Yeah. Then that should be fine. Right. So can't really get. Yeah. Let me see. Also, don't know if this was focused at the beginning of the dive, so. Yeah, like if I'm hearing you right, like you want it to look down on it? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately but it's just Yeah, it's alright. Yeah, alright. So let me just get one more picture and then we'll, we'll be good. twisting around a little bit. Yeah. All right. I think what I have is good for what we can get. Thank you so much for the cooperation and patience. Oh, no sweat. So on this dive, we have uh, completed many goals and are currently in a process of uh, completing them as well. One of them was testing out a new instrument aboard the ROV. This is the Impossible Sensing's laser dive bot, which contains a Raman spectrom yeah, spectrometer. Sorry. And you're probably wondering, does this use Raman noodles for some sort of ocean science? Well, it doesn't, even though it sounds tasty. It's actually an instrument that helps us understand the chemical composition of rocks without having to in a, uh, directly take a sample. So. We can point a laser at a rock or any other uh, sample of our choice. And when it, that laser bounces off of a sample, it, the photons within it are bouncing off of the atoms just like a tennis ball bouncing off of a floor. And you get different energies based off of the different materials that you're bouncing off of. So say I'm bouncing a tennis ball off of a bed, it's going to bounce very shallowly or very small or if I bounce a 
tennis ball off the table. It's going to bounce a little high. Um, oh, I don't know, it's kind of fuzzy. Kind of hard to see, but. Ocean of the ocean is <laughs> pushing yeah. it down, sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay, strong currents here. There is a little bit of current up on there since we got okay. on the top. Yep. Right. Makes sense. Oh, kind of a fuzzy one. Um, looks like a coral. S looks like some sort of skeleton with something on it. Actually, can't quite see though. But I think we should be good. A little bit rocky. Yeah. yeah. Going wide. Wide, and then still want the push coral, correct? Yes, on the push cores. Wait, can y'all hear me? Yes, gotcha. Yeah, yes, on the push cores. Okay, I'm just going to get situated out in front of uh, Atalanta and we'll take mm -hmm. the cores. I feel like as we approached the top of the seamount, we also got a bit more rolly. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good one. Feeling okay, so that'll do. The ship is stopped, right? Kay. Yes. Okay, so... It's like we're on a roller coaster back here. Yeah. Rocking and rolling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're moving, so Dwight is checking. Um, is that a thing in the center? Uh, not in the center, gently. Kind of looks like a small sponge or something. I don't know. Not much out here, like I said before, All the way down. that we can see. Okay. Oh yeah, the camera with the side of the boat. Okay. There are waves. We got a little shrimpy or something, kind of oh. something wandering <laughs> towards us. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Or oh, it looks fish. like a little fish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shoot. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. Let's see. I always jump Bye. around. Nope. There are there it is. three. There are little fish in the deep sea too, which is fun. So say we were to look underneath the sediment, what sort of uh, creatures in this part of the ocean would we be expected to find? Bird. Yeah, yeah so um, we would definitely see some forms of um, burrowing worms. Um, off the top of my head, don't quite remember which types, but definitely burrowing worms. Um, maybe some mollusks, or mollusks, yeah, mollusks, so like bivalves, like um, clam looking things. Um, other than that, there's likely bacteria also that we obviously cannot yeah. see. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, many of these burrows can uh, actually be uh, infilled with other sediment and over time can become fossilized and we can even find those in the fossil record. Yeah. But Daniel, can we find things in the fossil record from the ocean? Oh, uh, all the time. <laughs> uh, most of the sediment here will accumulate over millions of years and uh, will turn into a rock. Uh, mostly called limestone. Uh, we saw an example of that earlier with those carbonate rocks on that cliff. Right. And limestone is uh, made mostly of calcium carbonate and other carbonate minerals. And you can find that throughout the world. And where I'm from, the state of West Virginia, there is a 
there is limestone all throughout the Appalachian Mountains that uh, makes it really good for karst systems. And that's just a fancy word for caves. So calcium cool. carbonate dissolves really easily uh, with diluted or weak acids like an acid rain. And this causes a uh, uh, many caves to form in limestone areas where there is also a lot of water. So awesome. you never know. One day it can, all of this sediment can just turn into a cave of wonders <laughs> millions of years down the line. <laughs> nice. Awesome. But yeah, right now we're taking a push core, the one that we couldn't get earlier because now we're in sediment land. Pretty dense stuff. Yeah, pretty still good. not so easy, but yeah, oh, you're getting a pretty good pushing. one. Pushing. Yeah. It's definitely getting through this time. This is a pretty dexterous robotic yeah, arm. Yeah, got a, about it, starting to move the vehicle around. Oh, yeah, that's funny. It's going sideways. Looks like a whole lot of sand. <laughs> so how do you keep the sediment from falling out the bottom? You hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't have it yet. <laughs> oh, something just swam out. Makes sense. There's a little one-way kind of check valve uh, thing we have going there. Mm -hmm. oh, it's falling out. The race against time. <laughs> Almost there. Hard to see that last one. It's yeah. giving me the feeling of trying to find the um, plug for your charger in the wall at night and you don't want to turn oh on the light. Oh, I hate <laughs> when I have to, when I be struggling to do that. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. Was Honestly, sometimes I do this like there's this nothing even left happens. in that, is there? I, yeah, I guess we <laughs> lost it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Do you want to try to get... I can take uh, one, like, right here. Yeah. Like, one super close. Yeah. So, we're, we're actually trying to get three oh. yeah. cores. So, um, whatever you think is easiest for you. If you want to... In different <laughs> sites, right? If you want to get the... Um, y you know, use the uh, quiver that's closer to you. That if it's easier, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, they're just three. It's uh, in, tri in replicate. Oh, I see, I see. Three replicates. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just going to do three of these here. I honestly think this is my first time ever seeing us get a push core sample. I've only done the lab portion of it when I come back.
almost there. Daniel, who is listening to us from around the world? I'm curious. Yeah, sure. Are watching. So, uh, aside from the good old US of A, we got the United Kingdom and Germany also representing a big portion of our watch people. Hello, and Europe. Norway, Italy, Australia. And we got a few people from uh, There's Turkey's a bad gasket in the core as well, though. It shouldn't be dumping out like that. Oh, no. Even the Maldives and Czech Republic are checking us out. <laughs> Good one. I think Annie said that someone from Iran was watching earlier. It might have been my relative. I'm not sure. They're not here anymore. <laughs> nice. It's atrocious. I don't know. There's not much in that. No. Yeah, I know. That's all right. Um, Keep put that one away. We got a little something maybe, um, but yeah, try try two more. Maybe we'll have better luck, and if not, no worries. Mark a note there. Uh, well, I'll, uh, Sarah, that mm -hmm. uh, the core tube itself is lousy. <laughs> not only poor operating. Just waiting <laughs> for some random vertebrate to come on screen. <laughs> or a sea cucumber. That would be fun. They got a headless chicken on the last dive, I think. Very jealous. It's a type of... <laughs> it's a type of sea cucumber. Sea cucumber. <laughs> okay. It's literally... It looks like a purple headless chicken. Oh. It kind of has like um, these flaps that look like, how do I describe it? Try this one out front where we can see in the main camera. I think I saw a clip of that. It looks really interesting. Yeah, it kind of looks like they're like web feet or something, but it looks like a chicken. I love them. They're just so... Yeah, I was in the lounge watching it Random yesterday. in movement, yeah. Yeah, it's like purple. You yeah. can see on the inside. Yeah, so cool. Love them. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. What do you find in the middle of the ocean? Oh gosh. <laughs> the letter E, of course. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. oh. oh. Dang it. <laughs> Wait, I missed it. <laughs> you spell out ocean in the letter E. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be an odd oh my gosh. word. You're probably thinking, oh, it's synonymous. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Got me. Are you Googling these jokes or are you making them up? <laughs> uh, Let's I just can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny that. <laughs> oh. You have to talk to my lawyers first. He should not tell his secret. I was going to guess a pineapple. What? Or it's just very fine stuff. I don't yeah, know. I guess. Oh. Challenge. So <laughs> it almost looks like, like a rocket or something. <laughs> like a firework that's about to go off. Or when you're holding a hot pan and you're trying to get it to the table fast. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, almost there. Oh. It reminds me of that commercial where the little fisherman was holding the dollar on the fishing hook. It? It and the like guy it. tried to get it. He was like, oh, you almost had it. Oh. It'd be quicker than that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. There we go. That was that like a Super Bowl commercial or something? I don't I know. I think it was a progressive no, commercial. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was just like a regular what do you think, commercial. Do you want to take a third one? I'll t I can take it next to the rack again if you like. Yeah, do... Yeah, try that. We'll go for the third one, and that'll be it. Yeah, do it closer this time. Yeah. I think that worked better. Mm. Uh, are each of these samples have a different sample number, or do you want them to have the same one? 
Um, if they're three uh, replicates, I would assume. Uh, I think we still do them as separate samples. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure if there's a protocol for that. I'll just, I'll make three dots on the map. Is that just a rope or like a string on the core, I'm assuming? Has to be. Rubber band. Rubber band. Oh, man. Cheyenne, can you please calculate how long it's going to take us to uh, get to the surface from when we leave the bottom? Yeah. It'll take about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Okay. So that's 2.45. Are we still aiming to surface around four? Yeah. So was there an easier way to get push core samples then, but like other expeditions, or has this always been like the method? Nope, this is the method. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, think it, I think it just got depends it, on how, it, fine the, how fine the sediment or the core, the sample is, right? Yeah, there's nothing in here. Yeah, you want to try again? Oh. <laughs> yeah, one more try, please. A lot of the um, deep sea mud is stickier and cohesive, I guess you'd say. Uh, I thought it was going to be because it's so hard to push them in. Yeah, this is more silty, sandy, I think, which yeah. just pours right out, you know. You can see the shadow of the uh, arm with a push core from Atlantis' view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one, I feel like that really looks like a space picture or something. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a nice highlight reel of that. Now, like every time that the push core goes in, I have like instant salt and pepper push it <laughs> song in my head. <laughs> it's really hard not to just break into it. <laughs> I mean, we're in, we're in need of some entertainment here. <laughs> <laughs> some this is, biological this is super entertaining. <laughs> watching, <laughs> watching Mike Skip. trying to get this in. The <laughs> no pressure. Watching entertaining. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> it's just like watching someone just play a claw machine over and over. Oh. oh, do you guys remember? I don't. This is really. This might be really like niche, but it was that surgeon game. Oh, operation? Uh, operation? Not even operation, but like there was oh. like a video game <laughs> that people would play online. Oh. And it honestly, like people would like operate a hand, but it would be like with a keyboard and they would like operate the hand with each key, with certain keys on the keyboard and try and pick things up and stuff. And I feel like huh. it's similar. <laughs> no, I don't know that one. I know operation. <laughs> that, yeah, that's applicable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's 
frustrating just thinking about it. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Sarah, I was thinking we've seen enough of this summit. <laughs> And we yeah. should go to a steeper <laughs> area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, There's nothing. We, we looked at it, we sampled it, <laughs> and... Uh, we saw, uh, and now we leave. So I don't think we need to go to waypoint four. So I kind of like just going kind of back down this slope. Okay. And working around that, that ridge that we were on before. Okay. Uh, but I think we'll pick it up on the say uh let's see go like 100 degrees something like that uh yeah sounds good and we'll um just work our way once we get back onto the ridge we'll work our way around you know just kind of follow it around so we'll do ship moves based on like what we see in the sonar cool yeah does yeah, that sound all right then we'll be on hard yeah. rock to uh yeah you know, More we only have an hour so and 15 minutes or so. Yeah, just so kind of a, a light, yeah. a light dive. We can try to yeah. fill our, you know, collect a few more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hundred. Be like. You call for me. So, do you think that's in their range of uh, maneuverability? Yeah, hundred will be perfect. Okay. Here uh, I got bridge it. Nav. Which one did you want? The pilot camera? Oh, hey, hey. On it. Oh. Which way are you turning? All right. We're going back down slope, aren't we? Yep. Got it. Well, I don't think we'll go all the way down Floating the slope. We'll just go to that cool, uh, you know, that cool oh, no. ridge. Okay. Yeah. Shrimp. Okay. Hey, shrimp. Really red shrimp. shrimp are edible. I want to try it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but would you eat it with the head on? Ah. No. Nope. <laughs> well, there's some interesting looking patterns in the sediment there. Yeah. I wonder what could have caused that. Maybe something is probably a holothurian. Yeah. Or sometimes you can follow the track and it'll lead to one. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> like a snail. <laughs> that reminds me of a uh, thing I see on the internet sometimes. It's like a sand sculpture and there's like a disc with sand and there's a metal ball in it and the ball moves in like different patterns makes nope. different patterns in okay. the sand and okay. i'm not sure where i can buy that but <laughs> I, mean, I want that for christmas yeah, that sounds cool actually yeah. are you talking about like the zen garden things yeah yeah oh those are fun those are neat Oh, what's that right there? Um, those look like sea pens. I know that might be because are we turning? Did we turn around? We did. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we're probably so just seeing what wrong. we saw before. Ah. Or did we? Did we do a complete 180? Or basically. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we're gonna go down the same side we went up. This area that we're going down is a bit steeper, so maybe there'll be something different. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Let's Probably hope. a whole bunch of stuff, but we'll see. I want to see a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Give me something with a spine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make a feather star to the right. So we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so Was that our tether oh. that made that uh, mess? Oh. Oh, it's a oh, shrimp. Okay. Yeah. Like it shook up the snow globe. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> we just disturbed, yeah. You are muted. 10,000 years of. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it might be from the push course, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ultimate disturbance. I often think about that whenever I'm picking up or, or breaking off a rock or something and thinking, for millions of years this has existed here and just for it to one day be broken by me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and be put in my closet in my rock with my rock collection. Oh, you have a rock collection? Oh, do I have a rock collection? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh tell us about some of your treasures. Yeah, yeah, I'm a geologist, so I collect rocks all the time. What's your favorite rock? Yeah, what's your favorite? Yeah, so I'd say it's uh, peridotite, where you find yes. olivine in that. Yeah, and I like olivine. I got a good sample of that from How the Smithsonian. How do you Smithsonian. spell that? Olivine, like olive, and then I... Peridotite, you spelled it right. Oh, great. Come down a few meters on Ooh, Avalanche. Ooh, that's beautiful. I love that shade of green. Yeah, it's a really nice green. You find uh, actually some beaches in Hawaii with the green beaches that are made of olivine because oh, yeah. it's uh, exposed cliffs of peridotite. That's so cool. Yep. Maybe I'll find some. Yeah, it's a nice piece to check out. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. That's great. It's pretty much what the Earth's upper mantle is made of. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Cool. yeah, my um, my pet rocks I had, I just got them outside. It was whatever rock I saw outside I took home, and I painted them. <laughs> oh. So nice. they all like different colors with different designs, and they just stayed in a the a container way. basically. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Also, one of my favorites is uh, cubed pyrite. Uh, as far as I know, there's like one place in the world, and it's in Spain, there's this mine that has these like little cubes, crystals right, of you. pyrite. Oh, that's so cool. Fool's gold. Mm -hmm. That looks like it's right out of Minecraft. Yeah, it always reminded me of um, the Allspark from Transformers. I've never seen it, but I believe you. Yeah. How do you spell it? Tesseract. P, <laughs> P Y, right. <laughs> so, Daniel, why is it called Fool's Gold? Be like. You calling for me? So do you think that's in their range of uh, maneuverability? Yeah, 100 will be perfect. OK. Here, uh, I got bridge it. Now. Which one did you want, the pilot camera? Oh, hey, hey. On it. Oh. Which way are you turning? We're going back down slope, aren't we? Yep. Got it. Well, I don't think we'll go all the way down Floating the slope. We'll there. just go to that cool, <laughs> uh, you know, that cool oh, no. ridge. Okay. Yeah. Shrimp. Yeah. Hey, shrimp. Really red shrimp. shrimp are edible. I want to try it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but would you eat it with the head on? Ah. No. Nope. <laughs> well, there's some interesting looking patterns in the sediment there. Yeah. Wonder what could have caused that. Maybe something. Probably a holothurian. Yeah. Or. Sometimes you can follow the track and it'll lead to one. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> like a snail. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That reminds me of a. Uh, thing to see on the internet sometimes it's like a sand sculpture and there's like a disc with sand and there's a metal ball in it and the ball moves in like different patterns makes oh. different patterns in the okay. sand and okay. i'm not sure where i can buy that but <laughs> i want that for christmas <laughs> that sounds cool actually yeah. 
Are you talking about like the Zen Garden things? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those are fun. Those are neat. Oh, what's that right there? Um, those look like C pens. I know that might be because are we turning? Did we turn around? We did. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we're probably so just seeing what we saw before. Ah. Or did we? Did we do a complete 180 or? Basically. Okay, cool. <laughs> we're going to go down the same side we went up. This area that we're going down is a bit steeper, so maybe there'll be something different. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Let's Probably hope. a whole bunch of stuff, but we'll see. I want to see a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Give me something with a spine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a feather star to the right. So we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so Is that our tether oh. that made that uh, mess? Oh. Oh, it's oh, a shrimp. Okay. Yeah. Like a shook up the snow globe. Yeah. Yeah. We just disturbed, yeah. You are muted. Ten thousand years of <laughs> <laughs> some of it might be from the push course too. We can yeah. Yeah. It's all ultimate disturbance. I often think about that whenever I'm picking up or or breaking off a rock from something and thinking for millions of years this has existed here and just for it to one day be broken by me mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and be put in my closet in my rock with my rock collection oh you have a rock collection oh do i have a rock collection? Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> oh, tell us about some of your treasures yeah, yeah i'm a geologist so i collect rocks all the time what's your favorite rock yeah, what's your favorite? Yeah, so I'd say it's uh, peridotite, where you find olivine in that. Yeah, and I like olivine. I got a good sample of that from How the Smithsonian. How do you spell that? Olivine, like olive, and then I... Peridotite, you spelled it right. Oh, great. Come down a few meters on Ooh, Adelanto. that's beautiful. I love that shade of green. Yeah, it's a really nice green. You find... Uh, actually some beaches in Hawaii with the green beaches that are made of olivine because oh it's uh, exposed cliffs of peridotite. That's so cool. Yep. Maybe I'll find some. Yeah. It's a nice piece to check out. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. That's great. It's pretty much what the right. Earth's upper mantle is made of. Mm, yep. Yeah. Cool. yeah, my um, my pet rocks I had, mm -hmm. I just got them outside, it was whatever rock I saw outside I took home, and I painted them. <laughs> oh, so nice. they all like different colors with different designs, and they just stayed in a, a container, play, basically. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yep. Also, one of my favorites is uh, cubed pyrite. Uh, as far as I know, there's like one place in the world, and it's in Spain, there's this mine that has these like little cubes, crystals right, of pyrite. Oh, that's so cool. Fool's okay. gold. Mm -hmm. That looks like it's right out of Minecraft. Yeah, it always reminded me of um, the Allspark from Transformers. I've never seen it, but I believe you. Yeah. How do you spell it? Tesseract. P. <laughs> P Y, right. <laughs> so Daniel, why is it called fool's gold? Well, it's like uh, it's almost like a bronzy brass looking uh, mineral, and it's easy to mistake it for gold when you're thinking you're striking rich. But uh, pyrite is actually pretty common. I believe it's. Iron sulfate. You can correct me on that, Dwight. Uh, I believe you're right. Yeah. Uh, so, 
pretty common throughout um, the crust of the earth. And yeah, it's easy to mistake it for gold, but you might find it in pretty interesting places. Uh, it can, it has uh, crystal habits that grow in cubes, as we've seen, or even in um, uh, like, I forget what the 3D version of a hexagon is called, but uh, they grow in those shapes as well. And sometimes you find fossils that are, the minerals were replaced with pyrite. So like some ammonites, you get some really pretty ones that are nice and shiny. That's just all Lots pyrite of, uh, on the stuff inside. Pyrite, yeah. yeah, it's a sea lily meadow or sure garden. Is. Wow, this pyrite There's a coral is, in the middle is there. beautiful. Yeah, more plexorids. I think Always there was like primnoid before, but our main, I, I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that this area is dominated by plexorids and these stalked crinoids. Yeah. Um. And where do you normally find your rocks from? Well, you know, just anywhere. <laughs> but you also have to be respectful of where you find them. Sometimes it could be on private land, it could be on tribal land too, okay. or it's uh, somewhere that's kind of dangerous. So, uh, oftentimes it's just stuff I find lying on the ground. Like I found uh, like these really nice quartz crystals when I was just uh, walking along the river one day. And other ones I found on my uh, uh, geology field camps and during my uh, field trips during classes. Others I've bought over the years and yeah nice. places ranging from you know like colorado utah uh pretty much anywhere honestly we love sustainable and ethical foraging yep is that considered foraging what is that called it's rock hounding rock hounding yep that's the uh, uh -huh. technical term, I wow. guess. For real? Rock mm -hmm. hunting? That's so, oh. like, metal. It totally You could yeah. call it mineral, <laughs> mineral yeah. hunting or crystal hunting, too, or whatever. It's a huge hobby for lots of people. Yeah, I can. Oh, I believe it. It's, I feel like it's in the same category as people who go for morals or morels. Oh, yeah, those um, mushrooms. Mushrooms, yeah. 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 Uh, what do we got? Oh, that's a little... Basket, basket star. Yeah. That's a pretty big one. Um. I feel like I'm going to see a basket star show up in my dream one night. Yeah. <laughs> it's Make fascinating, sure but also it. scary. Have you ever seen um, in, in the caves that you've explored the uh, like calcite crystals? Yes, I have. And there's this one where we went really far back in and we found this uh, underground waterfall and right behind it, there are these like perfectly translucent calcite crystals. And it was spectacular. I actually got a piece of it. That's but really cool. Yeah, they're, and they grow, they look different, uh, however, in all different sorts of habits, I think, mm -hmm. how they grow. It's really cool. Yeah, it would be uh, one day I hope to find like, um, I forget what it's called, but it's the uh, uh, calcite where you kind of get a double Olympia image when you look through it. In the chat. Yeah. You could make an observation. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Those are the sea lilies. Yeah. I guess you can predict the current direction. Sir, can you put the, yeah. the port rail cam up uh, gotcha. instead of that bio box one? That looks like it's a crazy Daniel. origin. Have you ever been to the uh, Karchner Caverns? It's in Arizona. I have oh, not, some sort of but it's sounds It's one of the largest uh, cave systems, and I'll send you the link to it, but... Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's really cool. I got to go there this, um, this last November, and it was really beautiful. That's nice. Yeah, I've been wanting to make it to a lot of the caves in the uh, southwest, like uh, Carlsbad and Tippendogus and... Uh, Utah, places like that. Oh, and uh, Mammoth Cave in Kentucky as well. Oh, wow. Mm. 
Yep, so as we're getting back into it, we're seeing all the all the things we saw before. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. New area. We're still exploring. Yeah. There's a big coral. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Let's take a look at that. Look at that the size of that. That is base. a big one. Yeah. Big base for big currents. <laughs> So I was wondering, can you tell, like you said, we could tell the direction of the current based off where the crinoids are pointing. Mm -hmm. Would they be pointing into the current or against it? Into the current. Ah, interesting. Because they want to be capturing okay, the food. Ahead, that, the food that is coming from them. Wow, beautiful. Ooh. It's awesome. What kind of coral is this again? Um, just checking. Come on, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Primnoid. Primnoid. That's a nice one. Um, probably. It's in France. Um, if I can see the, yeah, I think it's just a Norella. Wow. Look at these, Primnoid uh, Norella. Get a highlight of this. Th these crinoids are yeah. kind of different. Yeah, so these are just, so these are unstocked. They're, they're black. Adam really likes these. Some sort of wiggly Are those thing. Oh, I feet think it's the attached one. to it? Is um, that the, the yellow part? Yeah. Is that part of the crown? Um, or is it another friend? I was going to say, it's like something's happening here, but I'm not entirely sure. The, they're definitely not, I think they're two different hmm. species. I don't know. Looks like two different, so they're definitely two different things. Looks like one brittle star with a, actually, wait. No, I think it's part of the crinoid. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it. Yeah, it is. Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I haven't really seen it is. before. Yeah, so the way, oh my gosh, if one of these started flying, that would be incredible, but we haven't seen that yet. I've seen videos of that. It's yeah, so it's so pretty. It's kind of rare to see. I, I don't see yeah, it. Yeah, they I've don't really move that much. But not very often. Just when they get spooked. Um, but yeah, they're attaching themselves to the corals to get that same current. Is there a snail? There's or? a gastropod. Oh, there yeah. is a gastropod. Or wait, is that a yeah. gastropod? Mm -hmm. Or is it like a yeah it's a shell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. You zoomed all the way. Yeah. I got. Yeah. See. That's all I got. Uh, if you just pull out for a bit, I can probably sure. get closer. I'm quite quite a ways back mm -hmm. here. Not these ones. Okay, go in again. It's so hard for me not to name every. So it's like uh, it's almost like a bronzy brass looking uh, mineral, and it's easy to mistake it for gold when you're thinking you're striking rich. But uh, pyrite is actually pretty common. I believe it's iron sulfate. You can correct me on that, Dwight. Uh, I believe you're right. Yeah. So it's pretty common throughout um, the crust of the earth. And, yeah, it's easy to mistake it for gold, but you might find it in pretty interesting places. Uh, it can, it has uh, crystal habits that grow in cubes, as we've seen, or even in, um, uh, like, I forget what the 3D version of a hexagon is called, but uh, they grow in those shapes as well. And sometimes you find fossils that are the minerals were replaced with pyrite so like some ammonites you get some really pretty ones that are nice and shiny that's just Lots all pyrite the on the stock inside pyrites, yeah yeah it's a sea lily meadow or sure garden wow uh, this pyrite there's a coral is, in the middle there beautiful yeah more flexorids i think there was like primnoid before but our main i i mean i think it's pretty safe to say that this area is dominated by plexorids and these stalked crinoids. Yeah. Um. And where do you normally find your rocks from? Well, you know, just anywhere. <laughs> but you also have to be respectful of where you find them. Sometimes it could be on private land, it could be on tribal land too, right. or it's uh, somewhere that's kind of dangerous. So. 
uh, oftentimes it's just stuff I find lying on the ground. Like I found uh, like these really nice quartz crystals when I was just uh, walking along the river one day. And other ones I found on my uh, uh, geology field camps and during my uh, field trips during classes. Others I've bought over the years. And yeah. Nice. Places ranging from, you know, like Colorado, Utah, uh, pretty much anywhere, honestly. We love sustainable and ethical foraging. Yep. Is that considered foraging? What is that called? It's rock hounding. Rock hounding? Yep. That's the uh, uh -huh. technical term, wow. I guess. For real? Rock mm -hmm. hounding? That's so, uh -huh. like, metal. It totally. You could yeah. call it mineral, <laughs> mineral <Yeah>. hunting <laughs> or crystal hunting too or whatever. It's a huge hobby for lots of people. Yeah, I can. Oh, I believe it. It's, I feel like it's in the same category as people who go for morals or morels. Yeah, oh, yeah, those um, mushrooms. Mushrooms, yeah. 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 Uh, what do we got? Oh, that's a little basket. basket. Star. Yeah. That's a pretty big one. I feel like I'm going to see a basket star show up in my dream one night. Yeah. <laughs> it's Make fascinating, sure but also it. scary. Have you ever seen um, in, in the caves that you've explored the uh, like calcite crystals? Yes, I have. And there's this one where we went really far back in and we found this uh, underground waterfall and right behind it, there are these like perfectly translucent calcite crystals and it was spectacular. I actually got a piece of it. That's but really cool. Yeah, they're and they grow. They look different, uh, however, in all different sorts of habits, I think, mm -hmm. how they grow. It's really cool. Yeah, it would be uh, one day I hope to find like, um, oh, I forget what it's called, but it's the uh, uh, calcite where you kind of get a double Olympia image when you look through it. In the chat. Yeah. You could make an observation. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Those are the sea lilies. Yeah. I guess you can predict the current Sarah, direction. Sarah, you put the, yeah. the port rail cam up? Uh, gotcha. Instead of that bio uh, box one. Kind of looks like so a crazy Daniel, origin. Have you ever been to the uh, Karchner Caverns? It's in Arizona. I am oh, not, sort of but it sounds interesting. It's one of the largest uh, cave systems, and I'll send you the link to it. But yeah, sure. Yeah, it's really cool. I got to go there this um, this last November, and it was really beautiful. That's nice. Yeah, I've been wanting to make it to a lot of the caves in the uh, southwest, like uh, Carlsbad and Tippendogas in uh, Utah, places like that. Oh, and uh. Mammoth Cave in Kentucky as well. Oh, wow. Mm. Yep, so as we're getting back into it, we're seeing all the all the things we saw before. <laughs> 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 Pretty much. New area. We're still exploring. Yeah. There's a big coral. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Let's take a look at that. Look at that the size of that That is base. a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big base for big currents. <laughs> so I was wondering, can you tell, like you said, we could tell the direction of the current based off where the crinoids are pointing. Mm -hmm. Would they be pointing into the current or against it? Into the current. Ah, interesting. Because they want to be capturing okay, the food. Ahead, that, the food that is coming from them. Wow, beautiful. Ooh. It's awesome. What kind of coral is this again? Um, just checking. Come on, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's the primnoid. For sure. It. That's a nice one. Um, probably. It's a friends. Um, if I can see the, yeah, I think it's just a norella. Wow. Look at these. Primnoid uh, norella. Highlight of this. Th these crinoids are yeah. kind of different. Yeah, so these are just so these are unstocked. They're they're black. Adam really likes these. Some sort of 
Wiggly Are those thing? Oh, I feet think it's the attached to it? Um, the, the yellow part? part? Yeah. Is that part of the crown? Um, or is it another friend? I was going to say, it's like something's happening here, but I'm not entirely sure. The, they're definitely not, I think they're two different hmm. species. I don't know. Looks like two different, so they're definitely two different things. Looks like one brittle star with a, actually, wait. No, I think it's part of the crinoid. Yeah, it looks yeah, like Yeah, it, it is. Just kidding, sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but I haven't really seen it that is. before. Yeah, so the way, oh my gosh, if one of these started flying, that would be incredible, but we haven't seen that yet. I've seen videos of that. It's yeah, so it's so pretty. It's kind of rare to see. I, I don't see yeah, it. Yeah, they I've don't really move that much. But not very often. Just when they get spooked. Um, but yeah, they're attaching themselves to the corals to get that same current. Is there a snail? There's or? a gastropod. Oh, there yeah. is a gastropod. Or, uh, is that a yeah. gastropod? Mm -hmm. Or is it like a. Yeah. It's a shell, yeah. So cool. You zoomed all the way? Yeah. I got it. Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, if you just pull out for a bit, I can probably sure. get closer. I've been quite, quite a ways back mm -hmm. here. Not these ones. Okay, go in again. It's so hard for me not to name every snail that I see down here at Gary. <laughs> <laughs> That's like naming every sponge, SpongeBob. Oh. <laughs> is that a shell? Yeah, that is a shell for sure. Yeah. Oh. So cool. Oh, and it's on the it's on the crinoid. Yeah. That's an interesting move. Yeah. Huh. And there's also shrimp in there. <laughs> Yeah. Hanging mm -hmm. on for the ride. <laughs> but yeah. Try oh, and I'll another to the side. Focus there. Yep. But yeah, I think this is a good enough zoom. Thank you. Very cool. Nice. Can move along. There's more smooth black rock, surprisingly. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I would say there's high current up here because oh, these yeah. rocks look real shiny like oh, they've just yeah. been polished for yeah. millennia mm -hmm. so clean Getting into lots of corals here. So many sea lilies. Do we? How many miskins have we collected? I think they're all um, taken. No, we only collected oh. two. Oh. And Wait. for some reason. We should get another one by this aggregation. How many do we need? Because I thought they said that they got them. They got all. a blank. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, because we have only two Four. on here showing, and they oddly took it. <laughs> Looks like we've got they at least They went four one open. and then all the way to six. So they have, like, the middle. <laughs> they we'll went from, the, the, like, the beginning um, to the end, uh, <laughs> the front and back. I think, I think they're <laughs> the easiest ones to get. Are they supposed to be in, like, yeah. relatively remote areas or no? Uh, they're supposed to be in aggregations of coral and sponges. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, this is sort of an aggregation, but no, yeah. we yeah. might see. Maybe if we wait until we get to like the ridge part, Yeah. if we can get there again. We're kind of on the ridge now. Yeah, we should. Here. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what I'd like to do is if we can keep the ship <gasps> sea star? following the ridge, like Oh, that's pretty. You know, stick, keep the ROVs on the ridge. Like parallel. And work our way. Or, um, yeah. It might be tough ship moves, but um, we could work our way back to back to where we started. I think this would be a great area to get a Niskin if we do want it in uh, areas of corals and sponges. Okay. Do you want a Niskin or do you want to stop the ship for a bit because we're getting oh, get pulled behind. away yeah. from the ridge here? Um, yeah. Steve agrees. Nitskin. 
<laughs> want one like in amongst here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. There's a sponge, there's some corals, there's a sea star. I think we're good. Ah, yep. beautiful. Yeah. Basket stars. Yeah. Oh, right. I think this is where we were, which is kind of perfect. <coughs> but that sea star looks new. Even though it was probably there. No, we're not in the same spot at all. Oh, really? No. Oh, my gosh. But we'll get, I think the best plan is for us to work our way along the ridge back yeah. to where we were. Okay. I agree. Wow, look how large that sea lily is on the top yeah, there. That is huge. Huge face. Mm -hmm. Squat lobster in the lower center, kind of. Oh, yeah. Little awesome. guy. Did you tell him which one? A little not huh? squishy. Which one to pull? Oh, um, anyone between two and five? <laughs> two, three, four, or five. Yeah, two, three, four, or five. Um, <laughs> I get the pan and tilt light on. There was two Niskins deployed yes. previously, correct? Right up. Yeah, one and six. Yeah. <laughs> She's on. Thank you. Ball. <laughs> that's probably why they went for just one and six last time. Yeah, but that's this extra. I'm going to assume Ooh, it was like one on in each the watch or something. Yeah. You plucked tell it as a glass sponge, that stalked oh, spongy thing. I missed thing. it. Did you get it? Yeah. Yep. All right. So two is collected. Okay. And then tilt oh. off. So what are these sample tubes right here in uh, V3? What do we use those for in particular? So there's this new technology called eDNA, which stands for environmental DNA. Um, and basically, it just collects whatever's in the water column in the area that we're taking it in, just de collecting debris, um, feces, any other excrement. Um, that sort of thing, anything, any biological remnants of stuff in the area. And then we can take that and bring it back to a lab, get um, DNA out of it, and we can see what's in the area, basically. It's kind of a less invasive way of getting a scope on community composition. Are we ready to continue along the ridge? Um, just seeing as we're stopped, just nail that I see down here, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> That's like naming every sponge, SpongeBob. Oh. <laughs> is that a shell? Yeah, that is a shell for sure. Yeah. Oh. So cool. Oh, and it's on the, it's on the crinoid. Yeah. That's an interesting move. Yeah. Huh. And there's also shrimp in there. <laughs> yeah. Hanging on for the ride. <laughs> but yeah. Sure. Oh, and I'll another to the side. Focus there. Yep. But yeah, I think this is a good enough zoom. Thank you. Very cool. Nice. You can move along. There's more smooth black rock, surprisingly. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, the, I would say there's high current up here because oh, these yeah. rocks look real shiny, like oh, they've just yeah. been polished for yeah. millennia. Mm -hmm. So clean. Getting into lots of corals here. So many sea lilies. Do we? How many niskins have we collected? I think they're all um, taken. No, we only collected oh. two. Oh. And Wait. for some reason, we should get another one many? by this aggregation. How many do we need? Because I thought they said that they got them. They got all? a blank. Yeah. Okay. 
I was about to say, because we have only two Four. on here showing. And they oddly took it. <laughs> Looks like we've got they at least four. They went one open. and then all the way to six. So they have like the middle. <laughs> they went from the, the like the beginning um, to the end, <laughs> the front and back. I think. I think they're <laughs> the easiest ones to get. Are they supposed to be in like <laughs> relatively remote areas or no? Uh, they're supposed to be in aggregations of coral and sponges. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, this is sort of an aggregation, but not yeah, we might yeah. see. Maybe if we wait until we get to like the ridge part. Yeah. If we can get there again. We're kind of on the ridge now. Yeah, we see should. Here. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. 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 What I'd like to do is if we can keep the ship <gasps> sea star? following the ridge, like. Oh, that's pretty. You know, stick keep the ROVs on the ridge. Like parallel. And work our way. Or. Um, yeah. It might be tough ship moves, but um, we could work our way back to in, back to where we started. I think this would be a great area to get a NISC in if we do want it in uh, areas of corals and sponges. Okay. Do you want a NISC in or do you want to stop the ship for a bit because we're getting oh, get pulled behind. away yeah. from the ridge here? Um, yeah. Steve agrees. NISC in. <laughs> <laughs> you want one like in amongst here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. There's a sponge, there's some corals, there's a sea star. I think we're good. Ah, yep. beautiful. Yep. Basket stars. Yeah. Oh, right. I think this is where we were, which is kind of perfect. <coughs> but that sea star looks new. Even though it was probably there. No, we're not in the same spot at all. Oh, really? No. Oh, my gosh. But we're g I think the best plan is for us to work our way along the ridge back yeah. to where we were. Okay. I agree. Wow, look how large that sea lily is on the top yeah, there. Yeah, that is huge. Huge face. Mm -hmm. Squat lobster in the lower center, kind of. Oh, yeah. Little awesome. guy. Did you tell him which one? A little not huh? squishy. Which one to pull? Oh, um, anyone between two and five? <laughs> two, three, four, or five. Yeah, two, three, four, or five. Um, <laughs> I get the pan and tilt light on? There was two Niskins deployed yes. previously, correct? Right up. Yeah, one and six. Yeah. <laughs> She's on. Thank you. Ball. <laughs> that's probably why they went for just one and six last time. Yeah, but that's this extra. I'm going to assume Ooh, it was you like one on in each the middle. watch or something. Yeah. You plucked tell it as a glass sponge, that stalked oh, sponge. I missed thing. it. Did you get it? Yeah. Yep. All right. So two is collected. Okay. And then tilt so off. So what are these sample tubes right here in uh, V3? What do we use those for in particular? So there's this new technology called eDNA, which stands for environmental DNA. Um, and basically, it just collects whatever's in the water column in the area that we're taking it in, just de collecting debris, um, feces, any other excrement, um, that sort of thing, anything, any biological remnants of stuff in the area. And then we can take that and bring it back to a lab, get um, DNA out of it, and we can see what's in the area, basically. It's kind of a less invasive way of getting a scope on community composition. Are we ready to continue along the ridge? Um, just seeing as we're stopped, just give us a second and I'll get situated because we're going to start backing down now. Um, can we get uh, Atalanta looking out to the west? All right. You can turn dealer's choice. Turn. 
turning right out. Roger. Coming down. Okay, you can uh, start ship move. Cool. So we want to move like northish along this ridge, right? Uh. I don't or north. I don't know if the ship will be able to go no, do yeah, north. Yeah, we can go uh, northeast, like thirty yeah. degrees. I mean, well, ideally, I don't know. You can't really see it now. We would line up like the in the sonar. Yeah, the like orientation of the ridge, and then drive the ship according to that. But yeah, um, so normal yeah. two is about two ninety, maybe three hundred, and then the reciprocal of that. Okay. So you want? I don't. Well, actually, the ship might be able to do. Well. No, two ninety three hundred. Can the ship do three hundred? Two ninety three hundred. Oh, we can do two ninety. Well, you you want you want to go down the slope, right? So the yeah, like the stay like stay on the right? stay on the down slope side of that ridge. Yeah. So like you're looking for like one twenty ish something like that. Yeah. A whole lot of things on this oh, road okay. below us. Yeah, I figured that might be the safer direction to go uh, northeast. So 120 sounds good to me. Yeah. If they can do it. Um, so you got we, the can't do we can't do 120. We can do 110, though. Yeah, it's right, right on the outskirts. I, one mat. Uh, or maybe 115. It's going to change as we go because it curves around with the seamount. Yeah. Okay. So one, 110 is fine. Cool. Yeah, worms. Maybe small steps. Can we get a zoom if possible? All right, she's going to go 110 degrees and 20 meters. Roger. Cool. While we're waiting, you want to look at anything yeah, in more detail? Say, yeah, I was to say, maybe if we could just zoom in where we're at. Sure, go ahead, video. Yeah. It's like there's an enemy over there. Mm hmm whole bunch of stuff. So fly trap an enemy, like you said. Some more of those black um, feather stars on this primnoid. You have some encrusting sponges, I think. Um, there's a basket star. There's a squat lobster in the distance. There's some brittle stars on one of the um, plexorids. The plexorids are the yellow corals here. Um, and I want to say that there was something fun on a rock, like, to the left. Is there, looks like something but with legs up there. The yeah, there's a squat right. lobster. Yeah. Or, what do you mean by up there? Uh, no, it's a squat lobster you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was like a, looked like an umbalula, but I'm not sure. Further Which is to the left, do you think? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it might just be another feather star. Um, a little bit upwards. Oh, well, this works too, actually. I think it was just a feather star. But, yeah, everything we've been seeing is still present. Yeah, so uh, right here. Oh, yeah, I see now. Yeah. Feather star and a long legged shrimp and a um, poss yeah, possibly with 
The skeleton on it. Yeah, look at those arms. <laughs> so pretty. And that creepy shrimp. <laughs> That's like... It's getting the light reflected in his eyes. I feel like I would see that in the corner of my room at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. That would be absolutely terrifying. Great zoom. I think we're good here. Oh, okay. and a sponge to the left, but... Oh, know. that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a shale, a shell. Um, maybe. I th I mean, it looks like that could be an osculum. That's why I was like, sponge, but it could be a shell. Kind of hard to see. You want to zoom on it or go on? No, it's all right. Okay. Full wide, please. Thank you. So I have a theory for you guys. Okay. So, so. it's about like a shell, uh, a snail, mm -hmm. and a slug. Okay. So do you ever think that maybe like a snail is like a slug, but with a shell on it? Actually, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost exactly right. <laughs> um, They're just naked. Yeah. So. <laughs> slugs um yeah so things that have shells and slugs yeah sorry sorry to interrupt oh, but no, uh do we want to keep going or do we want to stop and take a sample here um I, I don't think we need a sample here um uh, but i i feel like we've sort of lost that little cliff ridge, ridge feature mm -hmm. um i can't really tell if we're shallower than it or deeper than it I think we're deeper than yeah, it. Yeah, we're going deeper than it. Okay. Okay, so maybe we can um, get a little shallower and try to get back on it and follow it. Well, ideally, what I'd like to do is follow that feature around to the east, back you know, back to the east where we started. Let me pop up and see what's. Um. Well, we're definitely somewhere. Yeah, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're, we're backed off of it here, so. Okay. Um, which direction is Atalanta facing? Facing west. Facing no. just 270? Yeah, because I think it's right on, right where I've been. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can see it in the sonar. Right yeah. So give us a second and I'll get situated because we're going to start backing down now. Um, can we get uh, Atalanta looking out to the west? All right. You can turn dealer's choice. Turn and right out. Roger. Coming down. Okay, you can uh, start ship move. Cool. So we want to move like northish along this ridge, right? Uh. I don't or north. I don't know if the ship will be able to go no, do yeah, north. Yeah, we can go uh, northeast, like thirty yeah. degrees. I mean, well, ideally, I don't know. You can't really see it now. We would line up like the in the sonar. Yeah, the like orientation of the ridge, and then drive the ship according to that. But yeah, um, so normal yeah. two is about two ninety, maybe three hundred, and then the reciprocal of that. Okay. So you want? I don't. Well, actually, the ship might be able to do. Well. No, two ninety three hundred. Can the ship do three hundred? Two ninety three hundred. Oh, we can do two ninety. 
Well, you you want you want to go down the slope, right? So the yeah, like the stay like stay on the right? stay on the downslope side of that ridge. Yeah. So like you're looking for like 120 ish, something like that. Yeah. A whole lot of things on this oh, road okay. below us. Yeah, I figured that might be the safer direction to go uh, northeast. So 120 sounds good to me. Yeah. If they can do it. Um, so you just got we the can't do 120. Cylinder, right? We okay. can do 110 though. Yeah, it's right, right on the outskirts. I th one. Uh, or maybe 115. It's gonna change as we go because it curves around with the seamount. Yeah. Okay. So one 110 is fine. Cool. Worms. Maybe small steps. Can we get a zoom if possible? All right, she's going to go 110 degrees and 20 meters. Roger. While we're waiting, you want to look at anything yeah, in more detail? Say, yeah, I was going to say, maybe if we could just zoom in where we're at. Sure, go ahead, video. Yeah. It's like there's an anemone over there. Mm hmm whole bunch of stuff. So fly trap anemone, like you said. Some more of those black um, feather stars on this primnoid. You have some encrusting sponges, I think. Um, there was a basket star. There's a squat lobster in the distance. There's some brittle stars on one of the um, plexorids. The plexorids are the yellow corals here. Um, and I want to say that there was something fun on a rock like to the left. Is there, looks like something but with legs up there. The yeah, there's a squat lobster. Yeah. Or, what do you mean by up there? Oh, uh, no, it's a squat lobster you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was like a, looked like an umbalula, but I'm not sure. Further Which is to it? the left, do you think? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it might just be another feather star. Um, a little bit upwards. Oh, well, this works too, actually. I think it was just a feather star. But, yeah, everything we've been seeing is still present. Yeah, so uh, right here. Oh yeah, I see now, yeah. Feather star and a long-legged shrimp and a um, poss yeah, possibly with skeleton on it yeah look at those arms <laughs> so pretty and that creepy shrimp <laughs> that's like it's getting the light reflected in his eyes i feel like i would see that in the corner of my room at 3 a.m <laughs> yeah that would be absolutely terrifying great zoom i think we're good here okay. oh and a sponge to the left but oh know. that's what that is yeah <laughs> i thought it was a shale a uh, shell. Um, maybe. I th I mean, it looks like that could be an osculum. That's why I was like, sponge. But it could be a shell. Kind of hard to see. You want to zoom on it or go on? No, it's alright. Okay. Full wide, please. Thank you. So, I have a theory for you guys. Okay. So, so. it's about like a shell... Uh, a snail mm -hmm. and a slug. Okay. So do you ever think that maybe like a snail is like a slug but with a shell on it? Actually, yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's almost exactly right. <laughs> um, They're just naked. Yeah. So <laughs> slugs, um, yeah. So things that have shells and slugs. Yeah. 
sorry, sorry to interrupt, oh, but no, uh, do we want to keep going or do we want to stop and take a sample here? Um, I, I don't think we need a sample here, uh, but I, I feel like we've sort of lost that little cliff ridge, ridge feature. Mm -hmm. um, I can't really tell if we're shallower than it or deeper than it. I think we're deeper than yeah, it. Yeah, we're going deeper than it. Okay. Okay, so maybe we can um, get a little shallower and try to get back on it and follow it. Well, ideally, what I'd like to do is follow that feature around to the east, back you know, back to the east where we started. Let me pop up and see what's. Um. Well, we're definitely somewhere. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're backed off of it here, so. Okay. Um, which direction is Atalanta facing? Facing west. Facing oh. just 270? Yeah, because I think it's right on, right where I've been. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can see it in the sonar. Yeah. Okay, let's go 270 then. I'm just coming up. Bridge now. Can we go two zero meters at two seven zero degrees? Thank you. So here's a question for you. If you could be any sea creature, what would you be and why? Well, any sea creature? Yep, anyone. Can't be a mermaid, though. <laughs> Unfortunately. Must be a real. Yeah. Why not? Well, you didn't say it had to be real before yeah, you Yeah, you didn't. You <laughs> said <laughs> any. The, the Little Mermaid movie came out <laughs> this weekend. Oh. Live action Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah, no unicorns, no sea bears. Sea bears? Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, when I was little, I used to sea tell my um, mother my name was Ariel because I uh -huh. thought I was the Little Mermaid. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's a musical. I had a, uh, I have a cousin who worked on the movie, oh, so wow. I got a text from her the other day that it's out now. But it's Very so funny VIP. because my favorite Disney movie was Beauty and the Beast, <laughs> <laughs> but I told everyone my name was Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there's a, uh, some sort of eel thing. We can keep moving. Would you be an eel? No. What would you be? Yeah, uh, what would that's you a good be question. Doing? Sorry, I pulled Atlanta around. So the ship's move is moving us back to the ridge, we think, right? Yes, should be. I would be a colossal squid because mm. nobody ever sees them, but <laughs> they're almost like. <laughs> A mythical legend, but they're out there. Mm. Yeah, cool. And they're big. I'd probably be a shark because they eat tuna, and I like <laughs> I like tuna. <laughs> That's good. That's fair. That was gonna be my answer, a shark. <laughs> <laughs> um, or maybe a sea urchin. Hmm. Pokey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but people would eat you for your reproductive organs. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think if I was a like shallow water organism, I'd want to be a seal. Or no, I'd want to be, yeah, I'd want to be a seal or maybe an otter just because they're really cute. Otters are so cute. Otters are yeah. cute. They hold hands and they take little naps. Yeah, oh my gosh. with the rocks. Um, if I was a deep sea critter, I don't know, I feel like I'd be like a lugworm, like an acorn worm. Those are <laughs> the worms that just kind of like burrow themselves <laughs> in like a U shape and just kind of do nothing except for filter feed. They're fun.
What about you, Lupe? What would you be? Um, that's a great question. Um, what's What would I be? <laughs> How about an octopus? They're really smart. They are. Octopods. Dumbo. Maybe. The Dumbos, yeah. That, well, that's a, wait. No, that's a Dumbo octopus. Really cute. We haven't seen a cephalopod on our watch yet. I don't know. Yet. Because, like, I know. When I think of water animals, I'd be, I don't know, I'd go to reptiles. So, like, <laughs> I'd be an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> <Fierce>. But, um, <laughs> ocean, I don't know. Um, Part of me wants to say dolphin, and part of me wants to also say beluga whale, just because I like how they use echolocation. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, good those are so good. Yeah. Fan favorite on the camera when we can get them. Some sort of eel Aww. fish thing huh. in the distance. Seems like it has fins. Undulating. Oh. oh, yeah. <coughs> I think I want to change my answer. I want to be a hammerhead shark. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are my favorite sharks. I was thinking I'd want to be like a whale shark, just really chill. Just kind mm. of yeah. Kind of cute. You know? I, like, yeah. I like the tiger sharks just because I like their like their stripes and stuff. I we saw a whale shark last year from Nautilus. Man. It was awesome. That's really cool. Where was that? Uh, we were way up oh, in uh, the Papahanaumokuakea oh, okay. Marine National Monument, actually almost outside of the monument area in uh, mm. it's a long series of seamounts called Lilakalani Ridge. <gasps> we're back. It was about exactly a year ago. Oh, wow. Or awesome. kind of sort of la last April, just over a year ago. Awesome. And we are back to yeah, the Yeah, this ridge. is where we want to be. We with made the, with it. The Look at the little eel. You want to go along yeah. it? So, yeah, so this is the tricky part, right? Figuring out what is the orientation of this thing. Cause yeah, but cause it's it about, changed. this was the, sorry if I misunderstood when we were here before, but, uh, so this is like 270. Yeah. So you want to go along it. Uh, I think but you're asking the ship to move around about due north, right? Yeah. It's going to change as we go, though, because yeah. it follows, it sh in theory, it follows the contour. So what depth are we at now? 11.43. So what you'd want to maybe do is, where is the, there's no 11.43 contour, but what's the nearest con? Are those 10 meter contours? So the 11.40. Yeah, uh, okay, let's go 270 then. I am just coming up. Bridge now. Can we go two zero meters at 270 degrees? Thank you. So here's a question for you. If you could be any sea creature, what would you be and why? Well, any sea creature? Yep, anyone. Can't be a mermaid, though. <laughs> Unfortunately. Has to be a real. Yeah. Why not? Well, you didn't say it had to be real before yeah, you Yeah, you didn't. You <laughs> said up, any. Up the, rules now. the Little Mermaid movie came out <laughs> this weekend. Oh. Live action Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah, no unicorns, no sea bears. Sea bears? Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, when I was little, I used to Super tell my um, mother my name was Ariel because I <laughs> thought I was the Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a musical. I had a, uh, I have a cousin who worked on the movie. Oh. So I got a text from her the other day that it's out now. But it's so funny because my favorite Disney movie was Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> but I told everyone my name was Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, here's a uh, some sort of eel thing. We can keep moving. Would you be an eel? No. What would you be? 
Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Do. Sorry, I pulled Atlanta around. So the ship's move is moving us back to the ridge, we think, right? Yes, should be. I would be a colossal squid because mm. nobody ever sees them, but <laughs> they're almost like a mythical legend, but they're out there. Mm. Yeah, cool. And they're big. I'd probably be a shark because they eat tuna, and I like <laughs> I like tuna. <laughs> That's good. That's fair. That was going to be my answer, a shark. <laughs> <laughs> um, or maybe a sea urchin. Hmm. Pokey. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but people would eat you for your reproductive organs. Ah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think if I was a like shallow water organism, I'd want to be a seal. Or no, I'd want to be, yeah, I'd want to be a seal or maybe an otter just because they're really cute. Otters are so cute. Otters are they hold cute. hands and they take little naps. Yeah, oh my gosh. with the rocks. Um, if I was a deep sea critter, I don't know, I feel like I'd be like a lugworm. Like an acorn worm, those are the worms <laughs> that just kind of like burrow themselves in like a U shape and just kind of do nothing except for filter feed. They're fun. What about you, Lupe? What would you be? Um, that's a great question. Um, What would I be? <laughs> How about an octopus? They're really smart. They are. Octopods. Mm. Dumbo. Maybe. The Dumbos, yeah. That, well, that's a, wait, is that a spider? No, that's a Dumbo octopus. Really cute. We haven't seen a cephalopod on our watch yet. I don't know. Yet. Because, like, I know. When I think of water animals, that'd be I don't know, I'll go to reptiles, so like, <laughs> I'll be an alligator. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> ocean, I don't know. Um, part of me wants to say dolphin, and part of me wants to also say beluga whale, just because I like how they use echolocation. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, good those so are good. Yeah. Fan favorite on the camera when we can get them. Some sort of eel Aww. fish thing. In the distance. Seems like it has fins. Undulating. Up front. Oh. oh yeah. I think I want to change my answer. I want to be a hammerhead shark. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my favorite sharks. I was thinking I'd want to be like a whale shark, just really chill. Just kind mm. of yeah. Kind of cute. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like the tiger Some sharks. Dots, just because I like their like the stripes and stuff. We saw a whale shark last year from Nautilus. Man. It was awesome. That's really cool. Where was that? Uh, we were way up we're in uh, the Papahanaumokuakea oh, okay. Marine National Monument, actually almost outside of the monument area in uh, hmm. it's a long series of seamounts called Lilikalani Ridge. <gasps> we're back. It was about exactly a year ago. Oh, wow. That's or awesome. kind of sort of last April, just over a year ago. Awesome. And we are back to yeah, the Yeah, this is where we want to be. We with, the, with the view. Oh, look at the little eel. You want to go along yeah. it? Yeah, so this is the tricky part, right? Figuring out what is the orientation of this thing. Cause yeah, but cause it's it about, changed. this was the, sorry if I misunderstood when we were here before, but uh, so this is like 270. Yeah. So you want to go along it. Uh, I think but you're asking the ship to move around about due north, right? Yeah. It's going to change as we go, though, because yeah. it follows, it sh in theory, it follows the contour. So what depth are we at now? 11.43. So what you'd want to maybe do is, where is the, there's no 11.43 contour, but what's the nearest con? Are those 10 meter contours? So the yeah, 11.40. Um, so wherever the vehicle is now, mm -hmm. follow the contour. But if that's difficult ship moves, then... But if you zoom out a little, you'll see the contour is going to change, so we can like hook up with it again later. Um, while yeah. we're here, is there any chance that we could go to this coral up here? Yes. Oh yeah. 
Maybe the easier move is, is um, yeah, that the ship should be able to move like that, right? Yeah, we should be able to follow yeah. it. All right. Let's do it. But while we're here, yeah, go for it, Sarah. What do we want to look at? Look at the shrimp. Okay, go ahead and zoom. Looks like potentially another Madripoora. Oh, and a squat lobster. <laughs> That's a really menacing out. squat yeah. lobster. <laughs> it's like, do not touch my Madripoora. Ooh, and there's also a feather star kind of just chilling on top. And a basket star on the left. Yeah, so we do not have the Stolkim up, right? No, it's going. Oh, yep. um, okay. Could we, uh, let me just make sure. Could we get maybe a picture of this with if you the can Stolkin? get me a view of it up here so I can frame it. Yeah, that's a great, this is a great example. We have a bunch of associates on here. We have. So it's funny, when I try to select it, um, it says it's in use by another user. I am looking at it over there. Oh yeah, it might be over there. Over here. Does that mean I have to release it? I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, you would. That's the KBM system is haunted. It might let you. There's some kind of orange thing near the back, too, on top there. Oh, I see that. I wonder what you are. There's a lot going on here. So that crinoid is not really Ooh, so much. Is another on. squat lobster, just a different color? Yeah, it is, a different type. Let me see if I can... You want me to you want me to try it? Or sure. Um, oh, let's that. see. Another one in the back. Yeah, so are they called squat too. lobsters because like the way they look like they're squatting? Um. Or. Probably. <laughs> I thought it was because of the way they kind of shuffle back. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Can you take pictures from that one or no? Does it not work? I could try. Yeah, I don't know how to work it, but let's get up there. One moment. Amber, can you get me the what the still camera's seeing up on one of the monitors there? Yes. You can take whatever whatever you want. You can take that pilot camera one if you want. Okay. I think that's where they're looking at it. Okay, that'll do too. That's fine. Uh I'm not sure if that's the right one. Hold on. No, that's good. I, l I like to keep the pilot camera, actually, if I can. Yeah. In the back there, somebody identified that as a homoid carrier crab. Oh, sorry. It's PC-3. There we go. Uh-huh. Oh, I did get it. Oh, that's really loud. What did I do? Can people hear me? Yeah, I can hear oh, you. Oh, okay. Um, so, we're going to try and use the still cam to get a picture of this. Put the... It is. So what's currently on the screen is what we want to get a picture of. Okay, so we're trying to use the still cam. Yeah. Is 
zoom out on the Zeus, please? And then just this one. Okay, and this is just manual. Yep. Okay. Again, I think. Let's see where it goes. If I remember Leela doing that. Amber, do you know where this file, this folder is for the still camera? No. I'd have to okay. get that info That's for you. Fine. So for those of you who are tuning in, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are here in an area of Pacific Ocean called the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. We actually are lying just right outside of the boundaries of the monument. And we are currently exploring an unnamed guillot at the bottom of the sea floor. We are uh, about 1,142 meters below the ocean surface. We are currently exploring the uh, side of this guillot and getting some great pictures of some yeah. squat lobsters, crinoids, and other sorts of corals down here. Okay. So I think that and it looks like we have people tuning in from all around the world ranging from United Kingdom, Israel, the Czech Republic, and Brazil, all the way to Singapore, Turkey, and Australia. So welcome aboard, everyone. So does anyone know how to change the file type that it outputs? You're trying to, t we can't really hear you. You're oh, trying really? to change the file. The file type? File type? Yeah. I. No. There must That's be fine. a setting. Uh, I'm not sure. That's all right. Um, should be later. Can I see that piece of paper again? Is there any way that we can kind of get like a bit of, a little more above it and closer? Yep. Yeah. So for those of you who are wondering, how can I be a part of the uh, Nautilus? How can I get on an expedition and do some cool ocean science with you guys? Well, you can go to our website, nautiluslive.org. And you can go to our about page and scroll under and find employment opportunities. We have opportunities ranging from internships, uh, fellowships, and uh, other jobs like working on the ship's crew, working oh, yeah. as a scientist on board and on shore. And we are looking for people of all skills and talent, ranging from teachers and artists to scientists and engineers. Yeah. So this area of the ocean we are currently exploring, uh, right outside the P Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument, it's an area of U.S. territory that is under consideration to become a marine national sanctuary. This sanctuary would be placed right on top of the monument and would see to protect the waters surrounding uh, for, for preservation and conservation. One of those and if you are interested, are <laughs> if you are interested in uh, learning more, you yeah, can go to our there. website and oh, our we, we have a few oh, blogs yeah. that talk about uh, the potential monument. I mean, sorry, potential sanctuary, and you can also find a hyperlink for it on our updated current status page on the homepage. And it's currently open to public comment on the monument, so have your voices heard. Sorry, just doing some troubleshooting here to make sure I know how to use this. Bring 
starting to ship 10 meters closer to us? I think. I mean, I think I'm doing it. <laughs> so we, I think we should be good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow, I was looking at it wrong. Let's see. Yeah, so. I don't know, it's kind of in a tough spot. The way the ROV is facing now on the regular camera is kind of perfect, but the way it's on the still camera is still kind of... It's like difficult. Sorry, this is my first time using this camera. Um, yeah, I... Oh, we have brittle star, I mean, feather star action, but... Yeah, I think, I mean, I think these pictures are, they're not amazing, <laughs> but I think they're the best we're going to get with this angle on this ridge. So I think we should be good. I can get you another angle, but I thought, do you want to be in like? Kind of, yeah, kind of above it, like how the ROV is now, but Close, if that makes sense. Do you want to be in, uh, in up against the side of the ridge, though, or like more out front to get the thing um, like this? Up or? against the side of the ridge, but like above it, if that makes sense. So like how the um, normal camera is, how yeah. that is, but for the still cam. Yeah, but it it only looks straight out, right? So it, oh, the more right. I go above it, it just you just yep. lose it, right? Okay. Yeah. Then I think. Yeah then that should be fine. Right, so you can't really get, yeah. Let me see. I also don't know if this was focused at the beginning of the dive, so. Oh. Okay, oh, beautiful. Yeah, like if I'm hearing you right, like you want it to look down on it? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately but it's just Yeah, it's all out. right. Yeah, all right. So let me just get one more picture and then we'll, we'll be good. Twist it around a little bit. Yeah. All right. I think what I have is good for what we can get. Thank you so much for the cooperation and patience. Oh, no sweat. So in this dive, we have uh, completed many goals and are currently in a process of uh, completing them as well. One of them was testing out a new instrument aboard the ROV. This is the Impossible Sensing Laser Dive Bot, which contains a Raman spectrom yeah, spectrometer. And you're probably wondering, does this use Raman noodles for some sort of ocean science? Well, it doesn't, even though it sounds tasty. It's actually an instrument that helps us understand the chemical composition of rocks without having to you know, uh, directly take a sample. So. We can point a laser at a rock or any other uh, sample of our choice. And when it, that laser bounces off of a sample, it, the photons within it are bouncing off of the atoms just like a tennis ball bouncing off of a floor. And you get different energies based off of the different materials that you're bouncing off of. So say I'm bouncing a tennis ball off of a bed, it's going to bounce very shallowly or very small or if I bounce a tennis ball off a table it's going to bounce a little higher it's kind of the same thing and when we do that we're able to get an idea of what kind of atoms and molecules are uh, making up this sample that we're looking at and we can get a spectrum from that and that spectrum tells us what the chemical composition is and so this is an instrument that is used uh, on our ROVs 
that allows us to do more in situ uh, data collection. It's also an instrument that has a variety of applications, not just here on Earth, but in outer space as well. There is currently the Perseverance rover on there. It's kind of the same thing. And when we do that, we're able to get an idea of what kind of atoms and molecules are uh, making up the sample that we're looking at. And we can get a spectrum from that, and that spectrum tells us what the chemical composition is. And so this is an instrument that is used uh, on our ROVs that allows us to do more in situ uh, data collection. It's also an instrument that has a variety of applications, not just here on Earth, but in outer space as well. There is currently the Perseverance rover on Mars that contains a wrong spectrometer to analyze rocks as it goes along the Martian surface. And it has this instrument that ha could potentially have use on ocean worlds within our solar system to look beneath their icy crusts and to look at rocks underneath their ocean surface. Yeah, I think we're good to move on. I think that's the best we're going to get. I'm going to have to play around and learn the, how to They're use this They all look kind of blurry to me and to the monitor I'm looking at here anyway. Yeah, I... Let's see if I can just sit. Because I know we want to... I know we want to try and see more. That's the only reason why. Like, maybe just another day. Um, give me, like, a day to learn how to use this camera. Yeah, I'd say this this effort's easier when we we're not along a steep yeah. slope and trying to you know hover the hover yeah. the vehicle. It's you want to be able to set it down on the seafloor and get it lined up nice and with the vehicle with no motion in the vehicle and then yeah, it's dial well in the settings. You know, I can probably get it wedged in here, but the the thing is, you don't have any pan or tilt or anything either, right? Yeah, it's all right. Um. We could try it on a on one of the big corals that's up up on the top of the slope. Yeah, my main know? issue is just that um, kind of like this this camera also needs to be like configured at the beginning of the dive. Um, well, like we only have a half hour left. Do you want to put it back to interval mode, and we'll um, maybe find another one. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. We'll get them next time. If it makes you feel any better, I think I got some good ones from yeah. Kirk's camera. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, it's back on interval mode. So, I think. But we do get some basket, I mean, some feather star movement in the meantime, <laughs> which is fun. And the eel in the background. I was going to say, Sarah, you sound like you're far away from yeah, your Yeah, your mic. microphone's not. Oh, yeah. really? Sorry. Yeah. There's, like, something on that makes me hear myself, so I have no, no gauge. Oh, your side tone. I can show you how to adjust okay. that. Oh, look. An eel. Oh, an eel. They want to join the party and get his picture taken. Yeah, really. Yep. Not uh, to get him.
great, yeah. Intervals are being taken. Yeah. Uh, do we want to move on? Or do we want to keep trying with this? I, I can't hear you, Sarah. Sorry. Oh. Do we? Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Do we want to move on or keep trying with this? Uh, I think we should move on because we're near the end of the dive. Yeah. Let's just see what we can. All okay. right. I will move back over. How far along in the dive are we? Well, we we bailed out of the original plan. We decided not to stay up on top of the feature, and we moved back down on the side. So we never made it to the final waypoint. Bridge you, now. You put it back to interval. I did. Yes. Can we move Let's two see, zero see. meters okay. at zero three zero? Thank you. Yeah, so Yeah, so um it's the settings, it's I think it I I think I just need to go through the process like from the beginning because the focus wasn't quite working. Um, but I'll play around with it. We should look at the images that it collected during the dive or yep. on the last dive and see see what they're like and then yeah. do a better. So, so without Leela helping us out at the start of the dive, we might not be yeah. setting it up properly. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> um, there's some steps that need to be done like at the beginning that I think I'd have yeah. to, yeah, you can't quite Dan, do. Dan, but I think I, we'll I forgot it to out. do it this dive. I think Dan must have. Oh, it's all good. It's Dan's baby. He's, uh, yeah, <laughs> he knows it. Awesome. Knows. Messing with it. Lots of stuff here. So yeah, let's try to spend the last 20 minutes or so, um, you know, keep keep going along this ridge. And um, if we see another coral aggregation, we'll pop another Niskin and uh, maybe grab one last rock and then call it a dive. Roger. Oh, we're seeing some, I can't really tell from this angle, but those crinoids look to be the ones that are a little different, the stocked ones. Oh, we're seeing a lot, actually. Yeah, which? <laughs> um, actually, I can't quite see the backs of them, so they might be the same, but, oh, no. So, yeah. Yeah, they are the same. Big um, a big, there. Yeah, there's a huge one here. Oh. Upper left. Yeah, let's go there. Wow. wow holy. Whoa. Look at how far out that lower Oh my gosh, is. yeah. You can see where the current is. <laughs> yeah, rock also looks interesting. There's That's some smooth parts on it. I know that. It was a very flowy uh pattern to it yeah so what we have here is from what I can see we have so the really big white coral is a primnoid um, the things on top of it are more basket stars um, and more specifically the primnoid is calotrophora surrounded by um, paramaresids which used to be called acanthogorgias but now they are under different classification, but this is a really awesome assemblage. We have some more of those feather stars on top of it too. Getting in that sweet, sweet current. Mm -hmm. This paramarisa looks to be infested with brittle stars as well. 
So you can really tell that this is an area that gets yeah, good, flow. good nutrient flow, which makes sense. It's on the top, but really awesome area. It's like a full garden here. Yeah, you let's rock with let's a coral. Especially the yellow. But, uh, well. Does yeah, I was going to get a final rock sample, so we'll look for one that okay. has a piece yeah. of the yellow coral on it. Cool. We'll try. There might be some towards the bottoms. Right at the end of our leash here, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, it's all uh, it's all good. You can keep moving. We'll find more. But yeah, spectacular. Really cool assemblage. Oh, this thing's huge. This is like really great assemblage. That's a really great, great view. You can only wonder how old it is that primnoid or forward. But yeah, um, did you mention that you needed to move forward? Uh, no, we're just uh, towards the end. Don't of need to. It's just a uh, if you wanted to image that better, if you right? The ship a bit closer. Yeah, if you spin back the other way, there was. I did want to take a look at this guy that's d oh. dead. I oh, was the just dead curious one. Curious about that. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh. I'll get him oh, from the other it. side here. Did we just decapitate some crinoids? Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh no. Oh. oh no. That's okay. They're thriving. <laughs> um, yeah, we can move back that way because I don't think any of these rocks are loose. No. Wow. Amazing. Very cool. This will and be a pilots, great uh, let's keep an eye out for a loose rock that we might be able to collect that has a one of these yellow corals oh, growing corals on it. Corals on it. I'm not sure if we'll get one okay. though. And you wanted to see this? Uh, there's a coral off to the right. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Interesting. Now that kind of. Get another 10 meters in uh, yeah, oh yeah. on top of that one, too, yeah. Huh. Oh, wait. I wonder... No, that's on the big rock. Okay, zoom in. Oh, there. wow. Yeah, look at this one. Yeah, maybe. We can see, but I think that looks cemented. Ooh. Okay, so we have some colonization action going on here. I think this used to be a. Um, kind of looks like a Chrysogorgia, but I'm not. I don't think so. Basket star, is this, yeah. Yeah, so on top of it is what um, looks like a, is that a basket star or is that just dead? It looks like it could be a basket star, but also looks like it's um, part of it. Definitely a basket star, yeah. And then whatever coral likely, I think it's a Chrysogorgia is still growing from the skeleton. Is this another hard coral? Hemichorallium. Um, let me just make sure. It is not. Uh, yeah, it's not, not doing so well anymore. Yeah. That, that's, that's fine, I, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't need to study it in detail. I just wanted to see what it was. Okay. If you um, zoom out and kind of back yourself up a little bit, yeah. I thought maybe I saw a loose does this let's look at oh yeah sorry, some rocks in there that might have uh, 
Like these ones where the lasers are? Yeah. Kind of, well, no, so I'm the thinking left. those up there. Okay, sorry. All good. It's kind of tough because corals love a solid substrate. <laughs> like super solid. Um, maybe, no, that is definitely on a ledge. about this one here that little one is on a ledge i think or on a big rock but yeah the, maybe go closer just to look at it it might not be the right coral mm, uh, zoom uh, in. i don't think there's a coral on it though. um there's something on it this one that the lasers are on uh not that the lasers are on right below it but yeah yeah it's a little coral but none of them are <laughs> mobile rocks Okay. Yeah, we can keep looking around if you want to kind of keep driving around wherever the ship is now. I've lost yeah. the bearing. And also, are we still trying to be on track for 4 a.m.? Yeah, so we only have okay. like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. To Just wanted to make sure. Oh my gosh, we are massacring crinoids. <laughs> That's okay. They're doing well. They're doing well. Oh. Whoa, guys. <gasps> We oh got my one. God. Swimming crinoid? Yes. Oh my <gasps> god. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, look at that. So, oh no. <laughs> it's too stunned to speak. Oh you said this is a swimming crinoid? Correct. Wow. Yeah. wow. This is incredible. It is funny to watch them move. Yeah, they are really, they're really beautiful, but it's unfortunate to know that we scared it that much for it to move. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're really cool. There it goes. I mean, that was really cool. Um, so when it comes to crinoids that don't have stems that can move in a water column, mm -hmm. um, how come they move faster versus the ones that are a little more stationary? Move faster? Yes. Is it just because they had to, you know, propel you themselves to the water, or... Do you mean, like, why are they stalked versus unstalked? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, like, a kind of evolutionary thing. One found a better way to be, like, more sedentary and more, um, I forget what the word is, you know, like, in the, in the rock rather than moving. Um, it uses the one, so, like, the stalked crinoids use less energy to be cemented to a rock, but they probably get a little bit less leverage with you know where they are so if they're in a bad area they're not going to survive whereas the ones without a stalk can move around of course um this area do we see any i don't think so no it's so not it's as kind uh, of a ledge not as populated is it is the um is the ship moving now uh no we're stationary all right mike can you um, spin back left and look back to the area we were, we came from, and but then drop lower, so we're kind of at the base of the ridge. Yeah. I doubt there's going to be corals down there, just because of the depth difference. Yeah. I'll, um, with the current, but if you want to look around. Well, I was looking for a rock to get anyway, but yeah. um, mm -hmm. to the left there's some corals, maybe too. Uh, can you ask Steve if he yeah, wants yeah. one anyway, even if it's not attached to a rock? Yeah, 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 of course. Um. He's typing. Oh. Pointing like right around. Yeah. Well, here. any of any of these rocks that you see that look like you can grab, we'll get one more. Maybe here. I don't know. Yep. Now we're in sea lily territory. I'm curious to see. Well, actually, no. I kind of already know the answer as to why, but. Um, I guess sea lilies are more dominant on this, on the lower, on the bottom of 
the ledge because they are high. Is this up. rock too big to pick up? It's got a coral on it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's also probably not mobile. Well, if you set up here, we can get a rock and that coral, and it doesn't have to be on the. I think. Let me ask. Sure thing. I think we might have got a paramarisa sample already. Uh, I'm trying to think. Data logger. Uh, as of today? Um, thinking, no, in a different dive. Ooh, a nice Chrysogorgia. Oh, yeah, if it's a different dive. <laughs> Let me see. Not I'm asking. Quite. Yeah, we can sample one. Regardless, so, um, yeah, after we find a rock. But yeah, that. Is that coral? Uh, yes, it might are be these, a different Are these one. rocks way too big? Because we do have um, room in the front, in one of the front boxes. You still looking at this giant, giant one over here? <laughs> oh, that one's probably way too big. Yeah, that won't go in any box. Not how about, really want it. we could pin it on the porch. How about the, that one? How do you feel about this one? Well, then the coral might not survive that. Yeah, trail, so Steve said that um, he would take like a branch anyways. It doesn't okay. have to be attached to a rock, so that's why it was. Yeah. So what do you want to go for first, the snip of the coral or the rock? Up to you guys. Um, you want to go after you want to see about one of these rocks here? Yeah, that yeah one of those is fine. All right, let me just yeah get that over with. Try to get the bigger one if you can. Yep. Oh. A big one there. Whoa. That one's moving. Actually worried about that coming down on the camera. Oh. Can you move it out of the way? Second here. think yeah it looks good looks good you want to do a little spin kicking up some dust here oh yeah I think that's good the dust kind of getting in the way but I think I got some good ones I think I can go right in the front front lambda okay yeah, either Lambda or we have C available. Sure. Yeah. But I don't know good. if it's going to fit in C. In the front then? Yeah. Okay, uh, Sarah, can you toolbox out? Thank you. What's an Omega? Um. Wasn't there pieces of a coral? Yeah, it's Looks a coral. Like it. It's a coral clipping, but I can't. Para. Paramarisid? Mm -mm. Paramolda. Oh, I say it is. I'm a Close type it in. Okay. That's how they spelt it. I don't know if that's and we'll right. Take a snip of, uh, but they that's how might have snip of the yellow coral. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I would say that's how they spelled it. I'm not sure. If so, if we can get the whole, the whole, yeah, that one. I'm trying to get as much of it as possible. I think. Can we get the bubble cam on this, uh, Sarah? Try, try and see if we can drive it over there. Let's see 
which setting. Yeah. I might go ahead without it here. That's getting it there. Oh. Never mind. Oh, you got plucked it. it right off. Yeah. All right. Do we have a place for this? Um, I think you can get if you can get it in C, that'll be great. But yeah, if I say C, probably be the best option. We could or slurp it into a slurp bucket. Yeah. That's. Uh oh. Slurp's not gonna work because yeah. we would have had to take it out already. We gotta redesign this holster. Yeah. Um. So C. Yeah. C. You could probably put it in with the rock, honestly. Yeah. Could do that too. Yeah. I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, box out. Two box out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Rock is fine. Turn on the pan and tilt light. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Perfect fit. Ooh. All right, close it up. All right. Do we need another Niskin here? I think. Um. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, we are in a different spot. Um. Yeah. Let's look at the community and. Because, yeah. Uh, yes. I can't remember what I was seeing. Well, we're kind of at there. the base of this. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see an Argus where we're at. <laughs> in, uh, Atlanta. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a sponge. Um, try to think. Because we want um, Niskins in. It's not really huge density here, but we're okay. here if we, we want one. <laughs> I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. Steve says we can recover. Alrighty. All right. Awesome. We did it. Dive number three in the books. Okay. Okay, up on Atlanta. All right. And coming up. So yeah, productive dive. Really glad we got to see that crinoid move around. And then uh, turn to uh, starboard. Take up the ship's heading. And how deep are we estimating for the next dive? Um, ship Brian's, Brian has something in mind, and I'm not sure what okay. she... Um, uh, about, I, think, I don't know, I think something degrees? like 2,600 meters, oh, but okay. um, maybe even a little deeper. Right. Okay. Cool. Jumping right Great. Over. What's that? Well, you're turning 180, right? Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, so just maneuvering around a bit and then beginning our, dis our ascent back up to the surface. We're currently at 1137 meters. And it'll be about an hour and 15 minutes until we get back up there, I think. Something like that. Yes, that's correct. Awesome, thank you. Oh, that was some sort of fish. That was cool. Just tell me when to start climbing. Yeah, start coming up. Uh, just go for 15 meters per minute. Or, sorry, I'm going to do that easy. Uh, try for 20. Corner. What's that? The we're over on the right side. Yeah. Did I you get those no. still camera pages back? What do you say? I can't remember. I'm on the corner. So what do you mean sorry. You're on the corner? Oh, the winch, um, sorry. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, Did you give us back the that. still camera Oh, you talk about the protocols? Yes, oh, I did. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I did. But what I forgot to do. <laughs> but I'm fixing it. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. Just seeing some messages now. Yeah, I figured, I figured we got a paramaresid, but I just wanted to be sure, and we were just confirming with the scientists ashore, and they were like, yeah, take one, so hence why we took one. But it's always good to get different, um, different samples of sometimes what can be, what might be the same thing too, because you never know, it might be something different, it might have some differences. Um, between populations, even though populations can be quite um, mixed in these depths. And yeah, there might be some associate that we just didn't see, maybe we got. It doesn't really hurt when there's a ton of those organisms, so. But overall, that was a great dive. There were some really huge, really big coral communities that we saw and um, what did we collect? Plexoroid? Yeah. Yeah. Or um, are you referring to what we sampled? Yeah. What we sampled is um, under Acanthogorgia in this, but it's called a paramaresid now. Yeah. Or the first one. This one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so probably these two are the closest, given the depth ranges on those pictures. But yeah, lo lots of yellow. Mm -hmm. Lots of yellow. Uh, do about 19 meters per minute. Up to 19. Oh, you're still in the corner. Never mind. I'm just getting to the little... Yeah. Oh, hairy area. Oh yeah, that was our fourth dive. Was it oh, number four. I'm already behind. I'm already confused. Actually, technically, it's our... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get eight, really eight, technical... Eight, 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 <laughs> it's our seventh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're right. You're right. No, it's our fourth. can't believe we got, like, two recoveries and one in, like, one dive. Yeah, that was a long <laughs> day. But yeah. Um, 
Daniel is doing an interaction right now, so that's why things aren't as social and lively as they could be, but um, we love interactions because that means that we are um, interacting with kids <laughs> um, and, uh, and communities all around the world, actually, um, and showing people and kids and students how cool the deep sea is. Still kind of snapping over a little, but yeah. almost past it. Ooh, you're down below. Yes, I got to catch up there. Can we slow down? Uh. Uh, just keep what, keep what you're doing there. I'll just catch up with that. Any questions yeah. coming in? Um, no questions, but if you have questions, please feel free <laughs> to send them in as we look at our beautiful blue wall of nothing. Maybe something, but nothing right now. Um, there was a question 40 minutes ago from... 40 minutes? I know, from Newfoundland, asking um, if there's any semi-precious gems or stones or minerals at these depths. Sorry, what? Semi-precious gems what? Gems, stones, or minerals at these depths. Huh. Uh, are you on? Am I on? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, I think you might... Oh, wait. Oh, Turn I it upwards. Off. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> if there's yes. any gemstones. Any semi-precious gemstones or minerals at these depths? Uh, all sorts of uh, minerals, but uh, not necessarily gemstones. <laughs> uh, it would be pretty rare to find something like that at these depths because most of the rocks we're looking at are basaltic and they uh, when they erupt mm. on the surface and get exposed to seawater they cool really fast and it doesn't allow time for the crystals to grow I was just turning off the interval camera because we don't need a million pictures of the oh, <laughs> of thanks. the water column. <laughs> it is someone's job to weed all that out. Yep. Have you been doing that at all, Loopy, in the data lab? I don't know where my, uh, what? Uh, getting letters. everything together? Yeah, and like going through our photos and stuff. And uh, yes, I today I actually sorted the lab photos for the last dive. Yep, nice. So I sorted all that. Um, um, me, Paula, and Chris been trying to like hold down the fort while Leela. <laughs> yeah, I know. And stuff. So, but we're getting the hang of it. Um, I'm hoping we see Leela today. Yeah, she she said that she should be able to come and stop by the lab to help get things together. Nice. Or so, but um. Yes, that's my favorite part, I would say, is processing. In the lab or in the data? In, in the wet lab? In the wet lab. Uh, data lab is not bad. It's just a lot of, that's yeah. the paperwork part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in the wet lab, it's really cool because all of our samples come back with color, which is the coolest thing to me because you yeah. really, when you see samples in person, when you see these preserved organisms in person, all of their color is usually leached out or they're a completely different color. Um, and they just look super, super dead and it's super sad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's for educational purposes, academic purposes. Um, 
but seeing their pretty like pinks and yellows and purples, it's really cool. And also just handling the organisms is like wild to me. Very, very grateful um, to do that. But yeah, um, another question we got is, will there be any midwater exploration on this expedition? Well, we're doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing targeted, uh, although we haven't necessarily planned it. So it's not in the cruise plan. Yeah. It doesn't mean we can't still do it, but um, we're a little behind schedule, so we're probably going to keep working on the seamounts as the priority. And what do you mean? We've had so many dives. <laughs> 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 Trying to do one a day. I, I, we're, I guess we're pr pretty much on schedule. <laughs> um, but yeah, the mid, the when you get into the mid water column, um, if you think about it, it's kind of like, how do I put this? I guess it's kind of like air. Um, <laughs> if there were, oh, a fish, pink fish, no a thing, a squid, little squid, maybe a shrimp, I don't know, most likely a shrimp. Um, when you think about it, there's not a lot of places for organisms to like live. Um, so when you're like just in the water, there's really not going to be that much. But midwater column um, exploration is important. Yeah, th in fact, later uh, in one of the cruises that follows this one, we're going to be using the Mezobot vehicle. Oh, cool. And Mezobot um, is an AUV that is specifically designed to study midwater cool. animals, mostly yeah. in the mesophotic zone. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. important to study the midwater column for, like, productivity purposes. But it's generally not a biodiverse area. You're not going to see a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> but it's cool from like a, a nutrient. Yeah, uh, yeah, the vehicle, you know. the camera. Yeah, we're not going to see the macro fauna. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's Bacteria. lots going on microscopically yeah. that we're not really set Algae. up to study. Lila's back. Lila's checking Turn in. Turn you up. Okay, go again. Oh, yeah. Way better. Okay. Oh, you got it. Nice.
Yeah, you guys have fun. Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's still on, obviously, but you don't have... Huh. Also, I would like to correct myself. Okay. Can they... Uh, Michael I'll might wait. be able to cycle power to it. Uh, sorry, what's that? No. The oh. control of the main of of the Zeus. For the oh, I'm sorry. Port yeah, camera. we're up. We're after something else, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Can that get re rebooted or reset somehow? Okay. Gotcha. If you need to um, go deal with something, uh, just let the pilots know, and we can. I can sit over there if I need to. Yep. Okay. Thanks. I'll just correct myself. When I said that midwaters are not very biodiverse, I was thinking in terms of macrofauna. Yes, in terms of microfauna, they are super biodiverse. They're super important, um, and they do contain a lot of fishes. 